welcome back to our class don't forget to subscribe if it is your first time to visit our channel they're saying is a cross uh, which involves only one characteristic or trait trait is the same as the character and it's being shown in the genetic cross uh this guy mendo girl mendo uh put forward uh, the law of segregation he said segregate means that now uh, individuals during meiosis they are supposed to uh, segregate they are supposed to divide so that or the offspring must receive one from the parent uh, one from the parent male and one from the parent uh, a female so how do they form these um, uh, gametes which are being formed uh, which are being given to the offspring they are being formed during the process of segregation so he says that Diploid, diploid, it means that the organism has two sets of chromosomes. Organisms, for example, how many chromosomes do you have? You have 46, but you have 23 pairs. So if there are 23 pairs, then we say that you are a diploid or diploid. Randomly, you don't have a choice which one is going, which one is not going. It's randomly to the offspring, such that the offspring receives one allele from each parent. The characteristics you have now, the parent gave you, each parent brought one allele. If you are tall, for example, it means that those genes you have, one parent gave you one allele for tallness, and another parent gave you one allele for tallness. So if both of them, they gave you uh, a dominant allele, then it means that you are homozygous tall. If one gave you a dominant allele and another one gave you a recessive allele, then it means that you are heterozygous, tall. So that is the meaning that each parent is supposed to give you one character. Let's look at how do we mark. This is how we mark in exam. And if you miss something, then it means that you won't get a mark. Number one, whenever they give you a genetic cross, this is what you are supposed to write. P1, which means parent one, phenotype. Phenotype, physical uh, expression of an organism. We get this from the equation. A man uh, who is dark-skinned marries a, a lady who is uh, light-skinned. Dark-skinned man, light-skinned lady. That's it. That's the phenotype. So you go in. Then genotype. Now, who is this dark skinned, light skin? Is that person homozygous or is it heterozygous? That is the, uh, the genotype. So, when you read the story they have given you, you will find out that you will, you will be able to scoop out what is called the genotype. So, we give you a tick here, we give you a tick here. From there, because you have now the genotypes, you have the genes for each parent, then meiosis must take place, segregation must take place. When it takes place, yes, you form what you call gametes. And then uh, when these gametes now, you have, for example, the sperms this side, you have the ova this side or the ovum this side, then fertilization must take place. Eh? Fertilization must take place so that the offspring can be formed. Then you have uh, F1, which means first filial generation. And then now you get the, the phenotype of the F1. I'm going to explain this. After that, you need to get what's called the ratio or the genotypic ratio or the phenotypic ratio. Then you, you, you use the genotype to obtain the phenotype. Use the genotype description of an organism in terms of genes. And then after that, you'll be able to get what you call, what you call the phenotype. Writing the word meiosis and fertilization will also give you a tip. If you don't write it, you lose that tick. So now you have the gametes. These ones, you bring them here, and then these ones, you bring them here. Or you can swap them. So that's how we do mark. How do we mark genetic cross? That's how I've been trying to explain. This is a practical example. So F P1, F1, we give you a tick. Meiosis and fertilization, we give you a tick. Writing the phenotype, we give you a tick. Writing the genotype, we give you a tick. Then crossing them, putting the gametes here, and then you cross them correctly, we give you a tick. Writing the phenotype, 
the genotype will give you a tick and then writing the phenotype will give you a tick. P1 and F1 can change to P2 and F2 if it is the second generation. So now uh, that's it. Another thing which we also do uh, when we are marking you, yes, we make sure that um, there is a compulsory mark in the uh, a genetic cross. If they ask you a question, maybe P1 and F1, it should be the compulsory mark. And you have, uh, this question is how many marks? Uh, for example, there are six marks. And then if you count here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there are seven marks. And then they say that uh, P1, F1 is the compulsory mark. So you get the rest of these marks. If you count them, there are six. We won't give you six. We will give you five. Why? Because you did not get this one correct. Maybe you only wrote P1 and you didn't write P F1. So you didn't get this one correct. So when you are counting, we first count the compulsory mark and we count the rest. So make sure that when you are crossing it, at least cross it and you maximize all the marks. Okay, let's look at um, dominance, which for the types of dominance. We can go through them very fast.